flipped under a board. First flip of the day. And I flipped the board and I, and I flipped this tiny little piece of... Uh, flipped this uh, big fox snake here. Underneath the board. Underneath the carpet. We underneath this rock. And we flipped it under part of a drift fence. Up. Underneath this piece of tin. Oh, a bunch of garters. Hey guys, what's going on? Um, if you can't tell, if you can see behind me, I have a big stack of uh, tin and boards and stuff, and it's it's been a while. I haven't made a video in a couple months, actually. Uh, oddly enough, I haven't been making any videos because of the reason I make videos. It's just because I've been busy herping and things like that, so I haven't had the time to, you know, make quality videos at least. And um, along with that, just life, you know, uh, hanging out with friends, school and stuff like that. But yeah, so basically today, I'm going to be putting out some boards and tin and things like that. Uh, showing you guys pretty much what to do. Um, there's a couple different methods that you can use to do this. Uh, there's probably some already on YouTube, obviously. But uh, just wanted to talk to you guys a little bit and put some stuff out. Hopefully get some stuff under it in the future. Maybe even get something today. It's not too cold. It's 50s. Uh, kind of cloudy, but yeah, came out here alone, and it's going to be kind of hard to bring these out, but I'll show you guys a little <laughs> technique I use whenever I'm alone and I need to drag boards out somewhere, so here we go. So here's what I got, um, kind of a lot of stuff, uh, but I'll show you guys what I did in order to make it easier for me to take these out. I'm going to try to be quiet, um, a little bit quiet, uh. Makes a lot of noise when you take it out, but... Yeah. What I've done is drilled a hole through each one of these boards and tied a string through it so I can grab them all at once so it's more like a single unit rather than having to individually bring them out. And I brought this which I can do this with and drag them and this is a tool that will be useful later and you will see why so I'll catch you back when I'm at the spot where I want to drop these boards at so uh there's some nice marshy habitat here but <clears throat> while I'm here um some of the species that exist here are hog nose snakes bull snakes uh, racer snakes, <laughs> blue racers, and um, ribbon snakes and things like that. Mainly like the sand prairie species. Um, I found those around this area before. Not exactly at this particular spot. Which is why I'm putting these boards out. And uh, yeah, some nice sand prairie habitat. You'll see up ahead as well as some marsh. But yeah. These are giving me quite the workout, and uh, I have a lot more to go, so you got to do what you got to do. So I've gone ahead and attached this rope to my belt, and now I'm dragging it like a horse, but that's dedication. Y'all could use this technique if you ever need to. I patented it, so give me credit when you use it. It uh, certainly works. But, uh, yeah, now I have my hands free. So here's where I'm going to put some of the boards. Um, as you can see, the soil is very sandy, and I kind of made it strategic where I would put um, these. These are uh, plywood, and they're kind of, they, they'll deteriorate pretty quickly when they're in, like, moisture in wetter areas but since this substrate is well drained uh super dry sandy soil i chose to put this here rather than anything like stuff that would either uh that would like stay here very long so um this should last a decent amount of time here um i'm gonna uh rake a little spot in the grass to kind of 
make the ground a little bit more level. Um, that kind of gets things going a little bit quicker. Stuff will start using it pretty quick. That won't really matter since it's the fall right now, but you know, I'll show you guys what I'll do and then uh, keep moving on to some other areas. So what I'm doing is kind of uh, removing some of the grass and leaf litter under here. And this will do a couple things. This will provide a little bit of st space for the snakes and herps to get underneath there. And it'll kind of make the board kind of mesh with the ground, I guess. Um, it'll make it more like it's supposed to be here rather than just laying on top of the grass. I'm going to layer a piece on there. And I can also cover it back up so that nobody will be able to see this board. But kind of put it in there using this tree as kind of a... Uh, uh, reference point so I know where it'll be and um, yeah um, it kind of seasons quicker when you do this um, snakes will usually wait for the vegetation to die underneath and this will kind of be like a catalyst for that and um, everything under there will start to decompose a little bit quicker and there's little holes and spaces for it to get underneath and then I'm going to layer another one of these on top to provide a little bit more surface area and area for snakes to get underneath so yeah that's what I like to do with them and uh, this will get some good sun exposure uh, right here is west um, so the sun will be facing down on here this tree shouldn't matter too much in the summer it might be a little bit area for snakes to get cool underneath there too so yeah and when I layer these I'm gonna want to put some of this substrate between the boards because snakes will like to kind of go between them as far as the temperature gradient goes and they'll uh, kind of burrow between the two boards and uh, you can find them on the surface of the board underneath so I'll put a little bit here and then uh, layer this one on top like this and I'll do a little bit more raking and I'll show you guys the finished product in a second and this will be the first uh, first couple boards I put out it looks like they're kind of small but uh, this is enough for like a good sized snake to go underneath um, there's some space and holes underneath to go there and uh, you can barely see it especially from the trail which is over there you wouldn't even be able to see that but perfect and uh, I'm gonna move on to the next area a lot of times what I like to do is I'll choose the areas with the sparsest vegetation like uh, right here would be a good area that already doesn't have much there and I'll like to choose areas that are between two uh, ecosystems mini ecosystems whatever you want to call it um, it's kind of an ecotone I guess right at the edge of the forest uh, bordering the prairie because you'll get species that um, mainly live in the forests as well as species that mainly live in the prairie and species that'll go between the two during the time of year depending on the time of year so yeah, I'll put some probably along this forest edge, and uh, yeah, that should be pretty good. I've got also some pieces of tin that I'll bring out here, but yeah, sparse vegetation and uh, the edge of two habitats because it's kind of the best of both worlds. <clears throat> Another thing to consider while placing boards is prey items, and as you can see, there's a bunch of these mounds here. And these were all created by pocket gophers, and that's a uh, common species of uh, rodent that blue racers, uh, bull snakes, and other snakes will eat. So, in between these mounds here, I'm going to layer these two boards, and occasionally they'll be occupied by other rodents, not just pocket gophers, but rodents in general. And snakes will utilize their burrows for hibernation as well as eat them. So, yeah. All right, round two. Here's another one of the pieces, black piece of metal. Um, this will heat up quick, so I put it towards the beginning so I could check this first whenever I come back out here. So uh, it won't be too hot by the time I get to it, but pretty good. Whenever I'm making uh, uh, stacks of sheet metal, since they heat up so quickly and cool off so quickly, I try to uh, layer them and make them a little bit more insulated. So uh, that's what I'm going to do with this one and then two more pieces. And when you're putting out metal, 
gloves might be a good idea. So I'm going to flip this tarp here, see if there's anything underneath. Um, hopefully there's some snakes. Last time there were quite a few snakes under here, so we'll see. Whole lot of fox snakes here. I don't even know how many to be honest. There's a little, couple little babies and a few sub-adults, but a lot of them. Sweet. There's a water snake right here. There he is. There's probably a lot of snakes under here. I'm gonna set the camera down and try to flip this whole thing. Here's the water snake. Just hanging out here. Pretty cool. Well, there you have it. This is probably going to be my last snake of the year. Um, Northern Water Snake Neurodia Cypodon. Nothing too crazy, but pretty cool animals. Um, this guy's bit me quite a bit. And as you can see, this is what happens when you can uh, lay out cover. I didn't lay this out. I found this. But this is uh, an example of how you can flip cover and find snakes. And, um, yeah, pretty cool. Um... This is October 27th. I filmed this a little bit after the footage you just recently saw of me putting out the boards. So, yeah, pretty cool. Um, Northern Water Snake. Probably my last snake of the year. And, uh, yeah, pretty cool. And that is pretty much it. If you can tell, this is not the same day, uh, this is the same day as I found the water snake. I wasn't able to turn anything up a couple days ago when I was putting out the boards, but yeah, that's pretty much all I wanted to say. I probably left out a couple things, like another thing that you can do is sprinkle bird seed under your boards to uh, provide a little bit more rodent activity, and then from then on the snakes will just follow, so yeah, um, I'm glad I was able to find that water snake just to show you guys what you can uh, flip undercover. Uh, I didn't really know what direction I wanted to go with this video, but I just wanted to put something out there so that you guys uh, have something to watch while uh, you wait on my other videos. But um, I know there's not a huge following of people that are probably watching my stuff, but for those of you who do, thank you very much. And uh, yeah, here's a couple clips of uh, some things that will be coming up in the next couple months. I've been on plenty of trips this year, and I'm excited to make some new videos. I just haven't had the time really, so... Uh, yeah, thank you for watching, and until next time, I'll see you later. Summer's gone, but you can be my winter love. Summer's gone, but you can be mine. The world stops spinning when you open your eyes, my darling. What a beautiful soul, you deserve your mind.